The case we are going to talk about today is not one. But many there was a serial killer who was in a crazy case in a place in a short time. He killed several people in a row. The life of the deceased continues to be lost. This man's torture is extremely cruel and he's going to do some weird things that people can't understand and all the innocent victims come from the same famous university. So who is this terrible murderer? What is the relationship between the victim and the police can he be arrested for the crime hello? I'm Zhao Bei. Welcome to The Real Case. In the north of Florida in the United States, there is a small town called Gainesville. The area is not large. The population is about 100.000. There are no skyscrapers in the area, only gloomy secret areas. It is very suitable for people with ulterior motives to do some sneaky things there. The biggest feature of Gainesville is the Florida University built there. This is one of the top public universities in the United States. There are 16 universities in total. Imagine living in a small town of 100.000 people half of them are students at Florida University. Isn't that incredible? Today's case starts with this university. The case started in the summer of 1990. The long term is over the new semester has begun with the reintegration of college students the small town has been quiet for a while it's back to the way it used to be because the weather is humid and hot in the local area. Many people are used to opening the door and venting. Unintentionally, it provided a great opportunity for criminals to commit crimes. Sonia and Christina are very likely to be targeted by the killer because of such an unintentional move. They are both freshmen from Florida University only 17 years old, and classmates. Since everyone can talk more, they decided to rent an apartment outside the school. On August 23rd, two girls moved in happily and only a few minutes away from the school. Williams Park apartment unfortunately. I just moved in on the first day. They had an accident. That night, someone broke into the apartment of two people killed them the incident took place on Monday. August 25th. Two days later Christina's family brought some furniture and useful small items to the apartment to visit her no one responded after knocking on the door for half a day it's very quiet in the apartment it's not like someone's in there the family asked other classmates about it. Everyone said they hadn't seen the two girls since the day they moved in. No one knew where to go although I think it's weird but Christina's family still patiently waited for another day I thought maybe two girls would suddenly come out of somewhere the next day was Sunday. The girls still didn't move they were a little flustered. So I quickly contacted the property management staff at the apartment to open the door. The property management may have guessed that something had happened to the girls called the police before he opened the door let the police send someone to help him check the apartment. I was wondering if it would be possible for me to have an officer take me. Okay, what's the problem there? I have two girls. The parents suspected that something's wrong with them or they've disappeared or something. I'm just not sure, and my manager informs me not to go in by myself, but to get something by police officers. Okay, go ahead, we'll have to find me too. After the local police arrived at the scene, they entered the girls' apartment together under the guidance of the museum. At this time, the museum in front of them erupted. She was blinded by the bloody scene in the house one of the girls. Christina was covered in blood and fell on the first floor. There was no life on the floor from the surface. She should have been stabbed to death. Her body was in poor condition. It is obvious that she had been assaulted by the killer before her death. Another girl, Sonia, was found on the second floor, was also stabbed to death. The bruises on her body show that she had had a fight with the killer at the time tried her best to drive her out. When the two girls were found, they were naked, and the murderer posed a strange pose. There are traces of damage to the door. The police believe that the murderer took advantage of the two girls' sleep, used a screw to open the door, and sneaked in to kill them. So who is the murderer? What is his motive for the case? The target of the murder is a student. Will he be a member of college student? The police have not officially investigated. And there is a new murder case. Yet a few hours after two girls were killed a new victim appeared she is a 18-year-old girl. Krista Krista is also a college student but the school she went to is not Florida University it's a local community college in Santa Fe she is studying criminal studies and is on duty at the police station August 25th. Which is the night of the incident Krista was supposed to go to the police station to work but never showed up. The two police officers were worried that the little girl had an accident. So they rushed to her house to check. As a result, 
They were shocked to find that she was murdered in her own bedroom bed. The scene was also miserable. The perverted murderer not only separated Krista's hands, but also put her head on the shelf of the bed, and her were staring at her body. Her body was reassembled after the incision, and she was sitting on the bed naked. The police later investigated and found that the killer had abused her before killing Krista after the murder. He returned to the crime scene several times to deal with her body. There are some obvious similarities between these two cases first of all. The victims were female students their doors were opened by a screw knife secondly. The victims were all violated and abused by the killer in addition to the same wound on the body. A strange shape was also placed on them in addition. There were traces of tape on their bodies. In order not to leave evidence of the crime, the killer deliberately took the tape off and took it away. Three female students were killed on the same weekend. An unknown serial killer is on the run. After this news came out, the students in the small town were in a panic and heartless. Some people simply asked to go home. The rest of the students dare not go out alone, nor dare to stay alone, all squeezed together to comfort each other. At this time, the small town of Gainesville was shrouded in a cloud of fog. It's still this weekend. The police have just opened the investigation of these two cases. Xiao Cheng had another case. This time it was a robbery. There was a man in a ski mask holding a gun robbed a local bank. One of the bank staff took advantage of the thief's inattention secretly throw a box of red ink into the bag of money as a result. The ink stained most of the money into red leave a mark. The thief is probably afraid to use it for a while. He found a deserted forest and hid all the banknotes. At that time, Someone noticed his suspicious behavior and reported it to the police immediately. The police in Wenchun arrived at the forest and did not find any traces of the thief. But they did find a bag of banknotes stained with ink and found a temporary tent camp near the banknote where the banknotes were buried there were guns, face masks, screwdrivers, tape recorders, and other items used during the robbery. They collected all the evidence, pack it up and take it back to the police station for investigation and research. In such a short time, three malicious cases occurred causing the Gansville police to face huge pressure. In order to rescue this crazy guy as soon as possible, they don't dare to rest for a moment. But the crook didn't seem to give them a chance to breathe. He was on top of the case again two days after the bank robbery. Two college students were killed at home. They are Mani and Kui Shi, they all 23 years old. The two lived together in an apartment about 10 minutes away from Florida University. The killer used a screwdriver to open the door and sneak in. He stabbed Manny in the sleep with a knife first. Manny, who was in pain, quickly got up and fought back. He is a tall, strong man. He made a huge noise when he fought with the killer in the room and woke up Kui Shi, who was sleeping next door. Kui Shi got up and ran over to see what had happened. Seeing that Manny was covered in blood scared to death, he instinctively ran back to the bedroom the door finally. Manny died under the killer's knife and Kui's eye's door was also broken by the killer. Was tied and beaten. Unfortunately, he was stabbed to death. The killer only put Kui Shi in a strange shape after his death did not move Manny. There are only 100.000 people in the small town less than 10 days one of the five college students was murdered in his own home American history. There has never been such a terrible thing these cases have been reported by the media and have shocked the whole country at the same time. Everyone felt panic and pressing the local police asked them to quickly solve the case and find the killer not long after. The Ganswell police were really caught what they think is the real murderer of these cases his name is Edward he is a freshman from Florida University he looked very scary a car accident left him a lot of long scars on his face and body in addition to the appearance that fits the public's image of serial killers. Edward's internal is also very unusual. He has a mental illness, but never stipulates drug control. He also had multiple autopsy records. I like to carry a pencil knife with me to attack others. The police began to look at him on August 28th and he was indiscriminately monitored on August 30th. A few days after Manny and Kui Shi were killed, Edward was arrested by the police. What makes people feel incredible is. The reason for the arrest was that he had attacked his grandmother. Then the police announced that Edward was the suspect in the first few cases. In fact, the police had several suspects at that time, but I don't know why they only announced Edward's name at the end. In fact, they couldn't find any real evidence to link him with these cases.
but since he was arrested, the murder seems to have completely stopped. The lives of college students are gradually regaining their tranquility. No one was hurt again. This also made the local police believe that they caught the right person. But the problem came. With the legal identification technology at the time, although it is impossible to analyze and compare the blood type of the killer who was picked up at the crime scene, it is still possible to detect the blood type. The legal evidence confirms that the killer is blood type B while Edward is blood type A. These are two completely different blood types. Will he be the killer? Maybe the police are eager to solve the case and give the public an explanation. It may also be that the police case of that era was too random they deliberately ignored this important detail end of case investigation let Edward be accused. Let the real murderer be out of the law 800 kilometers away Louisiana. Northwest of St. Petersburg Police Department pay attention to these cases after careful research. They found that the murderer's method of doing the case is the same as half a year ago that is. In early November 1989 the murder case that took place there was very similar that was a triple murder. The killer sneaked into a family's house at dinner time and killed the three grandfathers in the house. The victims were 55-year-old grandpa William and his 24-year-old daughter Julie and the 8-year-old grandson. Sean, Julie's body was found by the killer and in a strange shape. After the Gansville police found out immediately send a police officer go to Louisiana to find out the situation I was shocked to find out. The shape of outfit is exactly the same as that of the girl who was murdered at Florida University. In addition, the murderer used tape and would take the tape away after the crime. The most important point is that the murderer's blood type is also B after a lot of research and analysis. They came to a reliable conclusion. The murder of the two places must be the same person. And he is definitely not Edward. A few weeks later, the Ganswell police received a call from the police. A woman named Cindy, who claims to live in Shreveport, said that she may know the identity of the murderer. This true? Cindy said that she and her husband had an affair with a man in a church a long time ago. Not only is her personality strange, but she is also violent. Men often say that her hobby is to stab people with a knife. Cindy's intuition tells her that this man named Danny Harlow is probably the one the police are looking for. Although there is not much hope, but the police still decided to investigate according to the information provided the new enemy. The investigation found that Danny Harlow Rowling was a local from Shreveport. Born in 1954, he was just 35 years old when the case was filed in 1990. He has a brother and a perverted father who abuse him. And this father turned out to be a cop Danny's mother tried more than once to take two sons away from this man. But every time he was forced to come back, Danny's father, in addition to abusing his wife, often beat up two sons. Anyway, as long as he is not happy, he will take his family as a gas can and beat them to death. In the process of growing up, Danny had been unable to bear torture from his father and committed suicide several times, but did not succeed. After becoming an adult, he joined the U.S. Air Force and was forced to retire due to drinking and eating bad things. He got married, had children, and then divorced. Later, he was arrested for many times for robbery. Every time he was out of prison, Danny would work hard to find a job and live a new life. But every time he couldn't hold on for two months, and he would become the same. Once he had a fierce fight with his father, he took his father's pistol and shot him in the face. Then he fled all the way to Gainesville. Do you remember the Gainesville police in the woods that I mentioned earlier? Did they find a camping tent? That's where Danny was buried. And the tape found was a music album recorded by Danny himself. He fantasized about becoming a creative singer and becoming a music star. Of course, this is impossible because his songs are very bad. Those lyrics were recorded by Danny in mid-August 1990. A few days after the recording, he suddenly opened the murder scene, broke into someone else's house in middle of the night, and killed five innocent college students at random, and made those terrible and incomprehensible actions. After confirming that Danny was the real murderer, the police immediately searched for him, but accidentally found that he was already in prison it turned out that after the crime. Escaped to another county in Alcala then he was arrested for robbing a supermarket there. By testing the evidence, Danny's blood is the same as the of the killer collected at the crime scene. But he was arrested, and refused to admit the crime of murdering five college students later he was locked in a prison in Florida waiting for trial. 
Danny suddenly put all the crimes to another prisoner named Bobby and asked Bobby to help write a confession letter to the police. This is a trial video released by the police at the time. Danny reluctantly admitted to the murder of five people in this trial and explained how he carefully planned each case, adding a lot of case details. For example, after murdering Krista, he mistakenly thought he had left his wallet on the scene, so he rushed back to look for it. And at that time, he separated Krista from his men and put on a costume. Danny also mentioned that he had multiple personalities. Good personalities and bad personalities have been fighting. In addition, he did not admit that he committed the three murders of his three great-grandchildren in Shreveport. With Danny's death, Edward, who was misjudged before, was finally acquitted and released. Before the trial began, something strange happened to Danny. He actually fell in love with a female author who writes criminal literature and sang a night song for the other party in a dignified court. He doesn't take the hearing as a matter at all. The trial officially began in February 1994. Danny was sentenced to life in court. In March, the entire jury recommended the judge to sentence him to death. After trial ended, Danny admitted to the three murders committed by Shreveport. This also means that he killed eight people in total. This serial killer came to his death 16 years after the crime. On October 25, 2006, he finished the last meal and sang a song. 52-year-old Danny sat on a moving chair, calmly accepted the drug injection, and the evil life. 